this uh, all took place in 1966 in uh, late May or June, early June. Prabhupada had, uh, Prabhupada had been having some difficulties in the Bowery. He wasn't able to function the way he had wanted. And there was like a, a pressure on me to help do something to get him a better place. Uh, of course, many of you know the story from the Prabhupada Lamrita. But basically what happened is I felt that it was time for me to try to, to help, and I didn't know exactly how or what to, what to do. So I went down to the, the Village Voice office, and right across from the Village Voice office was a little candy store. And every, I think it was a Wednesday, one day a week, when the Village Voice came out, came out once a week, this candy store would have the, uh, the Village Voice there right hot off the press. It was the first place you could get the Village Voice. I knew that because I used to look for apartments in the area and lots and places to live. So I got there bright and early and as soon as the papers were delivered, I started looking, looking for some kind of a place that might be suitable. Prabhupada's place was up in a loft on the Bowery and it was very difficult to access. So I thought, all right, a ground, ground floor place would be really good. So I just was going down the column and it was either the first or maybe the second place that I called was this address, and it was a storefront for rent, 26 Second Avenue. So I phoned, talked to the agent named Mr. Gardner, and straight away made an appointment to meet him, thinking that Srila Prabhupada would come and uh, we'd have a look at it and see if it would be suitable. So that's, that's actually what happened. We made arrangements to meet, and uh, I got here a little bit earlier than, than Prabhupada, and he also came with another devotee. Uh, Karl Apati, it was Karl Jurgens then. So we came, I came early and Mr. Gardner came, he was kind of a very sprightly looking youngish man. He was wearing tennis shoes and denims and a t-shirt and kind of good natured. So we had a little chat and I told him about Prabhupada, that he was a scholar, that he was an author, that he was a spiritual leader, that he had given books that he had written to the Prime Minister of India and so on. So he was quite impressed. He liked the idea. He liked the idea of somebody like that having the opportunity to rent the storefront. So then Prabhupada came along with uh, Carl. They were walking this way up 26 Second Avenue. And then we all made introductions. Then we came into this storefront and sat on that ledge just inside the window and had a discussion. I think there was one chair maybe. And I remember sitting in that ledge, and the discussion was, could we rent this place? So Prabhupada had uh, some very interesting things to say, but we did most of the talking. And the rent was $100 a month. And in the course of the conversation, I think he brought it up. that There was a, an apartment available also in the same building through the courtyard on the other side. And that, that would be available for $80 a month. So we began to talk, and the whole thing sounded like, the Prabhupada looked like he, this would be a suitable place, it would be accessible. So we had to have a little powwow right in front of Prabhupada and Mr. Gardner, how we would pay the rent. So we just sort of said between us, Carl and I, that we'd somehow we would pay the rent, don't worry, it's not a problem, 100 plus 80. And Mr. Gardner said that he would paint this building, this uh, flat, this apartment. We would repaint it white before, and that would take a few days, but then we would be ready because the storefront was available, and the apartment was available, and that he could move in and start giving his classes. We kind of told him what was going to happen here, not, not in detail. We didn't talk about big Arinams and Murdungas and Kartals, but that it would be <laughs> yoga classes. So at some point during the conversation, Prabhupada said that, uh, that Mr. Carl, he used to call us by our first names with Mr. Appendant at the front end, Mr. Michael, they're uh, they're members, they're trustees of our society. And then we got talking a little more, talking. Prabhupada had a set of Bhagavatams, the three Bhagavatam, the first canto, parts one, two, and three. And he actually presented them to Mr. Gardner. And he was a little, oh, I, no, 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 please, please take them. And Prabhupada signed them. And then the conversation, and he, and he was very kind of humbled by getting these books. He said, oh, thank you, it's very kind of you. That was a, quite a substantial gift for someone to get. And Prabhupada, of course, had that presence of being a very transcendental personality. He wasn't an ordinary person, wearing his saffron and being very distinguished. 
So he took it as an honor. And then he began to talk more about how we were members of this society. So then he asked Mr. Gardner, he said, and, and we would also like you to, to be a trustee of our society. So he, he thought for a minute and he kind of looked at the books and he said, oh, okay. <laughs> so we talked a little bit more about what Prabhupada was doing and, and how the movement was expanding and how he liked America. And then he went on to say that Mr. Carl and Mr. Michael, they're trustees, and as all the trustees do, they, they pay a, a, a subscription of $20 a month. <laughs> and uh, we would like you to participate in this way too. And, and uh, he, he hesitated for a moment, but then he agreed. And of course, and then Prabhupada said, of course, uh, it'll be easier for you if you just deduct it from the rent rather than have to pay it. <laughs> So uh, we immediately got a $20 discount on the rent. And I really can't remember whether it was 120 or 100 but you know, he took it off immediately. And, and uh, he was a little bit taken aback, but he, he kind of knew that that was the deal. And, and by the time all was said and done, he was in very good spirits. Before Prabhupada moved in, he asked me to go down to Con Edison and see if he could get the, elect the uh, lights and whatever else Con Edison supplied then for, uh, for free because it was a charitable organization, not, not a commercial venture. So I uh, toddled on down to Con Edison office and explained that you know, we're going to rent this storefront and our Swami is going to, to rent an apartment. And because it's a charitable organization, we'd like to have, have a, a, a get the deposit waived. That's what Prabhupada actually wanted, because there was a fairly, for us, a substantial deposit required. So it was kind of like talking to a brick wall. It just, you know, I say, oh, you know, we don't make those kind of arrangements. You just, just have to pay like everybody else. You have to pay a deposit for, for the apartment and the storefront. So I wasn't a very daring and active devotee in those days. Not that I am now, but I really just, okay, well, you know, that's the system, that's the way it is. So when I reported this back to Prabhupada, he wasn't very happy at all. It was like, hey, you know, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <coughs> that was the <laughs> feeling. So what, what eventually happened was Prabhupada went down there himself, at least so I was told, and somehow convinced them to waive the deposits <laughs> on the utilities in this, in this building for these two places. Then when things started happening here in 26th Second, Second Avenue, in a very short time, extremely short time from, from my view, uh, over a period of maybe one or two weeks, this very dingy place was completely transformed. Carpets were brought in, tapestries, paintings were hung on the wall, and it, be, it was filled up within a matter of days with uh, people. And one of them, of course, was Allen Ginsberg, who everyone was, wow, Allen Ginsberg's here, you know, it's big time. And it in inspired everybody. To, to come more and to take part and to, to take part in the kirtans. Um, and I know that, that Prabhupada would be extremely proud and, and thrilled actually, I know he is, to, to see us here today and to see all this wonderful memorabilia on the walls, to see how it's been so nicely renovated and to preserve and how it's preserving the beginnings of Krishna consciousness really the beginnings of Krishna consciousness spreading outside of India.